Hello, welcome to the latest video from City Ink Express. Uh, today we're going to be fitting the continuous ink system to the Epson Workforce WF7720. So this is a, it's a brand new printer straight out of the box. It's had its genuine setup cartridges put in and removed. Uh, and now we're just going to proceed to installing the continuous ink system. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tell the printer to do uh, perform an ink cartridge change uh, so the print head can come over to the middle uh, ink cartridge replacement start yeah let's just scan a lead and the print head let's just move the camera over so it's a very tall printer this one it's probably one of the tallest printers we've ever done uh, continuous ink system for right so the print head has come over into the uh, right hand side here and we're going to install the ink system now. So you'll have already filled and primed your continuous ink system. Uh, that will be shown in one of our other videos, uh, which you can watch. Uh, so it's already filled and primed, and we're just going to pop it straight in. So let's just bring the camera over slightly, uh, just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So we're going to install this, and it needs to be looped. The cartridge needs to be looped through... Uh, through the printer door here and pop straight in like a normal set of cartridges. They must be rooted through, do not root it underneath here. We've had a few customers root it underneath here and then close this and crimp down on the ink line and totally restrict the ink flow. So it must be fed through the grey door. So we're just going to pop them down, push down and you can hear four audible clicks and then just double check each one there we are so that last one if you listen yeah it wasn't fully clicked in you can I'll just recreate that so it wasn't fully clicked in so that may then fire up and just say not recognized for the yellow and just gonna gently squeeze down on this uh, and then press the reset button so we're going to close this down now. Uh, now, when this fires up, printer fires up, it may, on the first time round, say it's not recognised. The thing with the newer Epson printers is that if you power them off and back on, uh, it basically will fire up. It thinks it's had a new cartridge installed, uh, and it will just say not recognised, and it will want you to reset the cartridges. So uh, the, our best advice for the newer Epson printers, certainly with the the current chips on the market is that you keep your printer switched on. Uh, this will then mean that it'll just be continuous monitoring. You can press the reset button and you won't get any of this not recognized. Um, it won't go through a head cleaning cycle every time you switch it on. So best advice, keep the printer switched on uh, and do not have the sleep mode enabled. Uh, we do have a separate video talking about powering these on and off and the sleep mode. Uh, that will also be in the instructions. We do recommend that you watch our other videos. So we've got three videos, one for filling and priming, one for talking about the chips and the resetting and powering on and off and everything. Uh, and then the third one, which is this one, which is the install of the SIS. So that, that, the routing of that bit is okay. Now what we're going to do, within your accessory pack, you'll have a little red sticker, which looks like this, and then you'll have little uh, little metal clamp so we're going to remove the backing tape from the metal clamp so what I've done is I've removed the green tape and then we're gonna the red sticker we're gonna place it in the middle here and the reason for the red sticker is just to get a better addition it's quite slippy and we found our normal stickers wouldn't stick uh, down very well so we're just going to stick that on there and that will give us a good base point and we're going to remove the the red backing tape on this I'll, I'll zoom in and show you the camera after I've done it uh, yeah clearly need to uh, stop biting my nails here I hate doing these there we are so I've removed the yellow tape then we're just going to take this one here and attach it just to just going to offset it to the side and press down firmly so I've attached the metal clamp here 
and just make sure it's got a good addition and it's pressed down and that will fix that. Now the incline routing you need to bring the incline over and route it in. I will show you again. So the incline routing comes out the top here. It shouldn't really be any twists, kinks or turns. A nice straight loop coming off around here. And what you need to do is it needs to be a little bit taut. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the slack, uh, hold the clamp with this hand and then just pull the excess through. I mean to be honest you can feed it that way, it doesn't really matter how you do it, just as long as the excess is pulled through. So it should be a little bit taut here. If it's too taut here there'll be too much ink line flapping around inside and when the printer lid is closed and it could, could cause printer jamming and uh, other error messages. So we do recommend this should be a little bit taut. So if you notice it will go all the way over to the left and it will reach and then back over to the right hand side and that's it we've done that part uh, so I'm going to close the lid in a minute but before we do we've supplied a stand quite a tall one on this one uh, it's very important that you use this stand because the printer is so tall if the reservoir is not on a stand it's going to struggle to draw the ink all the way up so please use the stand pop this on the stand now before I close the lid. As soon as I close the lid it's going to want to start doing a cleaning and a charging cycle. You need to have the four small flat plugs removed. Again that's quite important. If that's not done it can cause the, print, uh, the printer to starve itself of ink, uh, clog, damage, uh, damage itself, burn out, a number of issues. So we do recommend make sure that the air filters are fitted during install and after when you're using. And the last remaining bit that we have, I had a clip here somewhere, with the new accessory pack you'll have a spare clip which looks like this. Again, just remove the backing tape, pop it on the side here, I'll bring my camera around in a minute, and just have your ink line rooted through. So you can see there what I've done here, it doesn't really matter which way around it goes, anywhere around there, just a nice straight uh, incline routing across the top. So now when I close this lid now it's going to go straight into thinking it's had a new set of cartridges and probably want to do some head alignments but let's have a look. Or it may say it's not recognised and we have to press the reset button. <coughs> yeah so it's basically, it thinks it's had a new set of cartridges which it has uh, do not turn the power off till initialization is complete. That's going to take about three or four minutes to complete. So as I said, this is a brand new printer. So I'm just going to sort the paper trays out and remove the manufacturer's packaging while we're waiting for it to, uh, to power up. I think what I'll do is I'll put, I don't know which tray it's going to use automatically. So I'll put a bit of paper in in each one, in tray one and tray two. just in case it decides to use a uh, tray, bottom tray when I do my prints. So you wouldn't normally have to do all of this but it is brand new. We're done. Uh, I'm just going to wait for it to finish its initialization. Uh, what I'll do is I'll run off another check 
print, uh, see if I've got to do a head clean, uh, which sometimes you do. Sometimes you can get away and be lucky and not have to do any head cleans, and then other times you have to do one, two, three, or even on very rare cases, maybe four. Uh, but yeah. So I'm just going to pop this underneath the scanner lid because uh, I'm going to use this to uh, do some copying when it's finished. So I just have to wait now for the initialization to finish. this so I am here uh, just run out of things to talk about um, I'm just waiting for the printer uh, to finish. So the amount of time it's taken to do this is it's quite normal. Uh, this is why we're saying you should keep the printer powered on because if you power it off uh, and you fire it on and it thinks it's had a new set of cartridges uh, it will do this every time you power it on and that's why we're saying do not use the sleep function and do not uh, power the printer off because you don't want to be waiting this long every time you switch it on and off. Probably got about another 30 40 seconds less, I'm guessing. So we're up to 12 minutes now. So we're done, replacement is complete. Uh, so I'm going to run a nozzle check off now. Uh, close, paper one, uh, print nozzle check, start. Depending on what the outcome of this is, may will depend whether or not I have to do any, uh, any further head cleaning. So we have basically one partially broken nozzle here on the black. So I'm going to have to do, uh, going to do black only. I'm going to do one more head clean, uh, just the black, unfortunately that means I've just extended the video by another couple of minutes, but I can't do a good sample print and show you it functioning unless I get a good nozzle check. It's not worth the risk because the image that I print uh, would come out not quite right and you'd think uh, that was the quality of the, the prints that you get and it's not. Uh, so just going to let this run through its cleaning on the black. Uh, and then we'll do some prints. Remember though, the black is uh, it's a lot quicker when it just has to do the one. Let me see.
Okay, we're done. Uh, print another check, print the pattern, yes. So we have we have a perfect nozzle check this time, so it's okay to uh, proceed uh, with uh, doing some prints for you guys. Uh, so what I'm going to do? Copy. Uh, just looking at the, cop, the settings. Just bear with me. Uh, image quality. No. I'm just trying to get a better, a better quality setting. Five. Okay. Start. So these are going to be quite, uh, quite quick copies. It's just basically scanning the document under the lid. And then what I'll do is I'm going to pop the lid open so you can see it with the lid open. As soon as I pop the lid, it's going to say there's an error, and the uh, it's basically going to say there's an error. The scanner lid's open, so I'll have to bypass that. So just bear with me on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trip the printer into thinking the lid's closed, just so you can see it. Working. And that's it, that's how you install the continuous ink system from City Ink Express on the WF7720. Thank you.